Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John. Today I'm going to help you build your mammoth bolt-down basketball system with a 72-inch tempered glass backboard. This video will follow the steps outlined in the instruction manual that comes with the hoop. If you've already begun or you need help on a specific step, feel free to check the description or comments below for a timestamp associated with each step of the build. The hoop comes in three big boxes, but those come in one big crate. Let's take a look at what you should have received. Because of the size and weight of this product, we highly recommend that you read the safety warnings within the instructions before you begin. Failure to do so can result in serious injury or property damage. This assembly requires three people to build. There are some steps that require six people. Let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need two 15 16 wrenches, two 9 16 wrenches, two 3 16 Allen keys, which are included, one Phillips screwdriver, one flathead screwdriver, one set of pliers, a rubber mallet, one tape measure, a drill, a shovel, 21 80 pound bags of concrete, four 34 inch length of rebar, a pencil, a level, safety glasses, a ladder. To make this easier, we're gonna use a 3 16 Allen bit, socket adapters, 15 16 socket, and a 9 16 socket. All right, let's get started. For section one, we've created a separate video on how to properly prep your area to anchor down your system. The link for that video is in the description below. Keep in mind this section requires a minimum of three days before you can anchor down your system. You must allow adequate time for the concrete mix to completely cure. Do not proceed with this build unless you have followed all the steps outlined in section one in your instructions. If you have questions about this section, feel free to reach out to our customer service team. We've already taken care of the prep work for section one, so we're going to move on to the next section. For this step, you're going to take a bolt, a washer, and attach it to one end of your 11-inch coupling pin. Now you're going to take the lower extension arm and position it onto the pole, making sure that the holes line up. Make sure the holes on the lower extension arm are positioned towards the bottom. Now you're going to secure the lower extension arm to the pole using the hardware. Make sure you put spacers in between the poles. Go up. Now you're going to take a bolt and a washer and connect it to one end of the 6.6 .6 inch coupling pin. Attach the upper extension arms to the pole using the hardware. Now you're going to take a bolt and a washer and attach it to one end of a 7.4 inch coupling pin. For this step, you're going to attach the handle to the pole with the hardware.
Now you're going to take a bolt and a washer and attach it to one end of the 3.9 inch coupling pin. For this step, you're going to start by removing the zip ties off of the gas springs. Now you're going to align the holes on the gas spring with the holes on the pole bracket. Make sure that the hole in the gas spring is lined up with the hole on the plastic cover. If the coupling pin is having a hard time going in, feel free to use a rubber mallet to tap it the rest of the way in. Now you're going to take a bolt and a washer and attach it to one end of the 11 inch coupling pin. Now we're going to slide the lifter arms onto the lower extension arms. The spacers go in a specific order so be sure to follow along. If the coupling pin has a hard time going in, feel free to use the mallet to tap it in the rest of the way. For this step, take a bolt and a washer and attach it to one end of the 1.6 inch coupling pin. Repeat this step for the other 1.6 inch coupling pin. Now you're going to attach the lifter arm to the handle, making sure there's a spacer on either side of the lifter arm. Repeat the previous step on the other lifter arm. Now you're going to take the trigger pin and slide it through the lower set of holes in the actuator on the gas spring as well as through the holes on the trigger bracket. Now you're going to take the top and bottom pin covers and attach them to the trigger pin using the hardware. Now let's take a bolt and a washer and attach it to one end of the 6.7 inch coupling pin. Now you're going to attach the bottom of the gas springs to the lifter arms, making sure there's spacers in between the gas springs and the lifter arms.
For this step, we're going to take a bolt and a washer and attach it to one end of the 7.2 inch coupling pin. At this point, make sure you have someone available to hold the pole for the rest of the assembly to prevent injury. For this next step, we're going to attach the lower extension arms to the backboard. The step is very difficult, so to make it easier, we're going to use two people to compress the gas springs to lower the lower extension arms. Now you're going to attach the lower extension arms to the backboard. You'll need at least two other people to help you lift the pole assembly so you can align the holes and attach with the hardware. The spacers go in a specific order, so be sure to follow along. Keep going down. Keep going down, down, down. Now you're going to attach the upper extension arms to the backboard with the hardware. It may be helpful to have someone lift the front of the backboard so you can align the holes easier. Repeat the previous step on the other side. Before we move on, make sure that the concrete from section one has had at least three days to fully cure. Now stack the lock washer and the USS washer onto the exposed J-bolts. With the help of at least five other people, you're gonna move the assembly so that the holes at the bottom line up with the exposed J-bolts. With the help of five other adults, tilt the assembly up over the exposed J-bolts, being careful not to damage the exposed threads. Now that the system is up, you'll want to have two people supporting the system. You also want to make sure that the system is level. Take a carpenter's level and put it on the face of the backboard as well as on the side. And to adjust, you'll loosen or tighten the bolts at the bottom. Our system doesn't have it, but normally you would raise the center hex nut until it hits the bottom of the pole plate. Now you can go ahead and put the caps on the exposed threads. Now you're going to take a bolt and a washer and attach it to one end of the 3.9 inch coupling pin. For this step, you're going to lower the backboard and attach the bumpers to the upper set of hole on the pole bracket, making sure that the spacer goes in between the bumpers. Now you're going to put the padlocks on to prevent the hoop from moving while you finish the rest of the assembly. Now you're going to take two bolts and two washers and slide the washers on the bolt. Slide the hardware from the previous step into the top slots on the rim. Now 
Now you're going to secure the rim to the backboard with the hardware. Slide the hardware through the lower slots in the rim and secure. Tighten the nuts under the spring to adjust the tension so the rim doesn't wobble. Now you're going to attach the rim cover plate using the hardware. Now go ahead and attach the net to the rim. Raise the backboard until the rim measures 10 feet from the plate surface. Now that the hoop is at 10 feet, go ahead and place the sticker right below the plastic cover on one of the gas springs. Thanks for watching our video of how to assemble a lifetime mammoth bolt down basketball system with a 72 inch tempered glass backboard. If this video was helpful, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And for more content like this, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. If you have any further questions, go ahead and reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.